Okay, uh, so hello everyone and welcome to this stream. So uh, today we're going to be doing uh, some uh, Blitz games. I'm here with uh, Philip and uh, yeah, also known as uh, Philidorf and he will be play playing some uh, Blitz games and I'm going to comment on them during uh, the games and then he will um, uh, go, he will mute himself during... Uh, his own game, and then it will come back after that. So, Jukke Meister is seeing, saying that everything is all good at the moment. So, uh, that's good to hear. Hopefully, um, all the sound and everything is working. Uh, Philip, maybe you can say something, and uh, we'll see if we can hear you. Yes, hello. So, uh, chat um, can let us Philip, know. Philip, aka yeah. Philidor. Yes. yes. Huh. Ready so, to go? Yes, the chat is, uh, well, we're getting thumbs up here, which uh, is probably indicating that it works. So I guess we can just um, start with the games now. I'll, I'll go and uh, find Philidorf on uh, Leeches, and then I can spectate the games. So uh, feel free, Philip, just to start whenever you want, and then you can mute uh, the Discord channel and I will be spectating. Okay, so we're gonna do the three two, right? Yes, three two is uh, the idea. Yeah. So, so you can see my uh, screen now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah, now I can see the game. So we will have a look at this. CDM. Game. Okay. Yes. So we start. Pablo yeah. Chess. Then I mute Mar. and then I go. Okay, that's fine. Sounds good. All right. So I think he has muted now. He's going up against. The strong Pablo Chesco bar here, rated 1400. So this is quite an even match. Just hit close to the mic. That's probably a good idea. All right. So I didn't pay attention to this, but we have an interesting opening here. It's an F3 Slav. I've actually played this with White myself. Uh, White's maybe supposed to go takes first. Um, not sure why, but um, Black took now E4. I think this is supposed to be fine somehow, but yeah, of course, white has a pretty nice center. This looks like a blunder. Actually, we should go to live chess. Yeah, he could have taken on d4. Um, so this was um, maybe the first chance here. And now it just looks quite even. I mean, white has um, a pretty nice center here, but also black is very solid and has some counterplay. I'm guessing he's going to go something like this eventually. And um, yeah, it should be uh, should be decent for black as well. It depends what happens the next move. Also, e5 is, is possible. And this one is also uh, interesting. So maybe a4 is a nice trick here. Just hoping for takes and then you can take and there's um, a threat against the rook. Okay, castling long is very risky here, but it uh, might be all right. It depends. White can also get a strong attack and black has to be... Um, a bit precise here to to get this attack working because it's not so easy to break through necessarily um b4 looked pretty good and uh okay this is probably a blunder because of takes and when white takes back you can take once again on a3 looks like this is what he's doing okay so he's up a pawn at the moment now probably king b1 and rook b8 looks strong trying to put pressure on this uh, bishop in this pin this game is, of course, going pretty fast since it's a 3 plus 2, but I'll, I'll try to comment as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, now the, the bishop is being attacked. I would probably play something like bishop b4, just trying to, to get some pieces in front of the king, maybe trading this. Queen e7 is also fine, of course. Yeah, and now it just seems very risky, this position for, for white, because um, even though he has some pieces here, his king is actually completely open with no pawns in, in front. So, uh, yeah, like bishop a6 is a really strong move. Um, just looking at all kinds of threats here. And now maybe even just doubling rooks like rook b7 and uh, rook b8 should be quite good. Okay, this looks like a blunder if I'm not mistaken because white just simply has uh, one more piece here. Um... Let's see what white does. He seems a bit confused at the moment. Uh, but I, I'm guessing he's going to take and then black is down a piece. Okay, this, this didn't happen. So now it's going to be a, a different uh, situation. Taking here and suddenly uh, black is once again doing great. 
So this is a lot of back and forth, but of course, uh, this is quite often what happens in three plus two games. Okay, so now he should take on, on c5 here, and then he's up a pawn and, and still has a really strong attack. White probably has to take this, which is also not something white wants to do. And yeah, then just taking back with anything and, and trying to play against white's king should be very good for black. So at the moment, it looks like the first game is going to be a win, but of course, many things can still happen. So, um, yeah, just uh, chat, you can uh, let me know if you have, have any thoughts about the position or any suggestions. Hello, Lauren. Nice to see you here. All right. So, yeah, this is what I talked about. This was uh, probably uh, expected. Okay, so rook eight. Once again, the only thing he has to watch out for is discovered uh, attacks, but he has this check, so that's fine. Now bishop c4 looks pretty good. We have someone else in the chat here. LC Falle. Hello. Nice to see you watching the stream here. All right, so yeah, once again... The position is more or less the same. I guess white is trying to get the king safer now by running away, but it's not really helping because, uh, yeah, there's still this attack. And knight a4 is attacking the queen, but he can just give a check, and uh, this knight is going to be a bit exposed here, it seems like. Uh, even like queen b4 is, uh, is attacking the knight indirectly, or actually directly, because it's, um, it's a pin on this bishop, so... Yeah, once again, something like queen c3 here will be met by queen takes a4 if he sees it. Um, yeah, so now he has the chance to do this. But it's not an easy move to see necessarily, it depends. Uh, but I, I think he will... Okay, he played this. But of course the position is still very promising here. Let's see what white does. Probably queen c2 should be played. Uh, trying to block. Okay, this is uh, also quite risky I would say. I guess bishop b5 is, is once again uh, um, a pretty good move, trying to take here and um, yeah, opening up the position. I mean, white has some pieces around the king, which is why he is still surviving at the moment. Um, but if black can trade some pieces, then, then this maybe won't be the case anymore. And of course, the time situation is also important here. Since it's 3 plus 2, um, most probably... Um, they're not going to lose on time, but in time scrambles with this little time, um, there will usually be lots of mistakes uh, at all levels. So this will be interesting to see. Philidorf has still a good position here against Pablo Chescobar, but he is going down on time now, so he has to be uh, careful. And now I'm guessing that his idea is, is once again to go bishop b5. And... Um, yeah, taking this knight simply, uh, it's it's not that easy to stop necessarily. So I guess king b2 is, is possible to try to move this knight whenever uh, it's possible. Um, but again, there's there's quite little. Okay, so uh, rook c8. Yeah, bishop b5 was, uh, was an option here to win this or at least um, have some tactical possibilities. But he played rook c8 instead. Uh, yeah, uh, exactly. Um, it's totally winning for black, as uh, Odvar is saying. But it's not um, that easy with this little time. So he has to be sure uh, or make sure that he doesn't lose on time. It is maybe the most important thing here. So, uh, okay, so what happened here? Queen d6, bishop c4. This is a very good move. Okay, so now he can finally take and, and take here. And this should be... Uh, the end. It's mate in two if white takes. Uh, okay, he did something different, but then again, he can just take or he can give a check. There's a bunch of options here. This is also very promising, of course. And now just finding a, a final blow here should be uh, should be good enough. Even just taking the knight and being up a piece is, is fine. Uh, there's no reason not to do that since that would be quite uh, a simple position to win. Okay, so now he's going for the mate, which is maybe not the best uh, decision practically because it's not uh, it's not that easy to find the mate with five seconds on the clock but he just needs to keep his extra piece here 
and uh, he should win. Okay, so now he just moved the bishop and be up um, a piece. Okay, so he did lose on time. Um, this was what we were afraid of. And now I'm waiting for him to come. Uh, oh, here I am. That sucked. <laughs> yeah, that sucked. That was uh, really close. Um, it was. But of course, not easy with uh, with time troubles. So yeah, it started able... with a night blunder. That was uh, horrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was some blunder. There were uh, some blunders in the end there. Uh, can you see the board when I'm when I'm analyzing on the stream here? Uh, or... Yes. Yeah. I okay. So. It. I'll go to uh, analyze this board and we'll have a look through this. So uh, the opening was quite sure. I, uh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sure I, uh, I probably overlooked a mate or two. Did I? Um, I'm not sure. Actually, you might have had a mate, but as I was uh, saying here a couple of minutes ago, maybe easier just to to trade off and keep uh, keep the extra knight in the end game and then you also don't have much to look out for so it would be more simple to play with a uh, little time which is uh you know um, quite smart sometimes in blitz just to make it as simple as possible instead of finding the quickest win but we'll get to that uh once, yeah, yeah. Uh, once we get to, to that position so this opening is quite sure. interesting uh f3 yeah i think you can somehow punish this but i'm not sure how we can check the opening book. This is a really nice uh, tool. Actually, you can't see it now, so I won't be won't be using that. But usually on Lee Chess, you can use the opening book to have a look at the most played uh, moves. And of course, also the computer is possible um, to use for this. Um, and according to the opening book and the computer, you played the best move taking on C4. And after um, E4, the mistake is to not go B5 and trying to hold on to this pawn. And actually, um, in a lot of cases, when uh, white isn't playing a4 before this, b5 is actually a good idea to keep the pawn. Uh, and it's kind of annoying to play this position for white, because not only are you not getting this pawn back, uh, but you kind of have to watch out for some uh, potential b4 stuff or, or something like this later on. Yeah, I was actually considering that to defend the pawn, but... yeah. Uh, in the split second, I thought it was a waste of resources, but uh, I see now, or understand now, that mm -hmm. that might be yeah. a good one. Okay, yeah, oh, that's good. So, um, I mean, what you played in the game is also fine. Um, it's just that, yeah, this seems uh, seems better since you're actually just uh, basically a pawn up. White has the center, but I'm not sure how great it really is. So, uh, white should go a4 and then try to win this pawn back uh, later on, but this... Um, yeah, this would be a different story. So since there was a lot uh, or a lot of things to think about during that game, we will just go to uh, or a bit further into uh, the game here. Yeah, this is also a key moment, I would say. Um, <clears throat> White has played bishop d2, which kind of protects the knight. I guess this is the idea, um, but it has a problem. So can anyone in the chat or um, you, of course, Philip, spot the move that black can play here? Yeah, is it the uh, queen takes on the? Yeah. So, so this is the problem with uh, with bishop d two. It uh, leaves this pawn uh, without protection, and you can take it, and also threaten this bishop. So, it's uh, yeah, basically a free pawn. But it's it's quite easy to miss those kind of moves in uh, in a blitz game in the yeah. opening because you're you're playing uh, moves very fast, and if you don't automatically see that this is hanging a pawn, you'll probably play something else like castling and, and knight d seven. So. It's important to uh, to pay attention uh, also to um, to your opponent's moves. Quite a uh, strong time. pawn as well, right? Yeah, so this would be really nice the to get. D4 would, yeah. Um, but okay, uh, this yeah. this was what was played. Um, I'm remembering it next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a good idea. I mean, um, you're still not worse here. It's just a missed chance, you could say. Or maybe you could be worse, but I think you're doing all right since you have uh, quite good development here. Knight e2 is protecting the pawn. I'm just going to check the chat here. Is there anything interesting? Is Magnus here? Unfortunately not. He is, uh, yeah, not going to be here today. I can uh, I can say that for sure, which is uh, a disappointment, but he will come back later. So, yeah, knight d7. Yeah, they're just uh, normal developing moves. 
b5 is uh is a good move this is sort of the plan that you want to play for uh normally in this kind of uh, opening you want to go b5 put your bishop here and eventually uh play for either e5 or c5 um they're both pretty good so you have to uh look at the situation you could say um but this is anyway you also do the take the bishops to bishop to a6 would that also be a possibility uh, in like a what did you the say? Black bishop bishop. A6? In a, in the fianchetto my major like this yeah you, you showed the uh, normal fianchetto there but i'm just wondering uh if a6 would be better than b7 okay a6 is um yeah maybe this is possible actually um because once you move the bishop you can go b4 so this might be interesting um but I'm not sure when the pawn is here because at the moment this bishop is sort of uh, blocked on a6. But it's mm -hmm. an idea that you you can play. It's uh, yeah, I think it's possible actually. It looks weird okay. um, mm -hmm. at first glance, but I think it's uh, not so bad. But I, okay. I like the move that you played as well with a5, and this also um, goes well with bishop a6 if you want to play this later on because it makes sense to have the pawn on a5 first um, if you yes. want to do this. Let me see. Exact same setup happens when the king side five moves into the. Yeah, I'm just reading the chats here. Into the main line, Karo Khan. Um, yeah, I think I know what you mean. I, I'm not entirely sure, but that's probably correct. Um, okay, let's continue here. A5 is, I think, a good move. A3 sort of has to be played. And yeah, I mentioned in this position that you can uh, you can try a tricky move with uh, with A4. And the idea is just that in a blitz game, you might be able to trick your opponent here because, um, yeah, he might take on b4. Of course, he can just go bishop a2, and then you will move your bishop, and it will be basically the same thing. Uh, but if he goes um, a takes b4, you can take this, and there is a discovery against the rook. It's not a very big deal since white can uh, defend it, but there is... The slight chance that he will just take this uh, automatically without thinking and then you will win immediately after taking this and of course also if he does actually see this um there might be some advantages with having this pawn here and and also white has some uh, weakened uh, light squares you could try something like this the only problem is of course if if this pawn is too weak but it's uh it's definitely an interesting idea yeah definitely yeah but all right, let's continue here. Um, you play bishop e7. Also, just nice to keep it simple um, when you don't have much time. And yeah, this this uh, long castles move is uh, is very risky, I would say, because black has already started the attack here with a5 and b5. Um, so it sort of just invites black to attack, uh, attack even more. And uh, white would be much safer on this side with the king and um, yeah, black wouldn't be able to attack it. White would have quite a nice center and I think the slightly better position, although black is also not doing too badly. Uh, but castling long um, is just way too risky because he's walking straight into the attack as I was talking about. And you're also punishing this immediately with b4, um, okay. which is probably the best move here. If white takes, then you take um, probably with the pawn, you open up the a file for the rook and you should have a strong yeah. attack. Spot to that. Yeah, and uh, but after what he did, you have had an even stronger position, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because you win a pawn, right? Yeah, I see. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so this this should be good. Did you uh, did you think that your position was promising around here? Yeah, uh, I started uh, believing in the position when he went for the long uh, castle. Yeah. yeah, okay. As so, I mentioned, and then, and then I saw the king was uh, approaching some deadly lines in the with the rook and the queen and everything. Okay, yeah, so already at this point you thought that your position was good, right? Yeah, so yeah. just a small um, hunch. Yeah, um, this is... Uh... Very much true. I was just uh, checking in. It's it's good to know uh, what you think the evaluation is. For some people, it might not be that obvious. Um, but I think black's position should be good. Uh, I mentioned the move bishop b4 here. It's also just uh, a simple way of playing, uh, just getting out of the attack, trying to trade pieces in front of the king. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, as, as void zero is pointing out in the chat, no pawns in front of the king is not a very good sign. 
So, um, mm. yeah, this was an option, but of course, queen e7 is also fine. And this gives the the uh, a5 pawn, but it kind of even just helps black because it opens up the a file as well, which means that it's going to be even more dangerous for white's king. So maybe white should actually not have taken this pawn. Uh, and now you get to go to a6 with your bishop, which is a great move. Just getting this into the diagonal and uh, yeah, it's a very active piece. It also means that you can bring your other rook. Um, now the knight went here. This is probably a, a good way of defending. And now uh, you made quite a big blunder, but luckily um, white. Yeah, I know there was some majors, uh, major blunders there. <laughs> Just uh, the yeah, time okay. was uh, a yeah, major but... factor. Uh -huh. Did you did you realize at this point that he could take it, or was this something you just? Saw yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah. th that was actually a mouse slip. I will uh, actually oh. call it because I didn't uh, okay. was I wasn't preparing for that click at all. But then suddenly I saw the knight was moving there. Oh, okay. uh, I was actually just playing with uh, with my mouse just to find the spot, uh, square. But when I saw the knight move, mm -hmm. I, I just saw immediately this uh, is a losing piece. Okay. Yeah, then, then so uh, I actually I'm considering uh, pushing the regret button, but um, <laughs> it's not yeah. my style. I don't want to beg for mercy. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just uh, uh, yeah, hoped so. he overlooked it, and he overlooked it actually. Yeah, he did. Um, it's something that can happen quite often actually if you trust your opponent too much that you don't even like look for blunders. But this one should be quite easy because it's very easy to consider taking this. Um, so, um, yeah, is it a Yoki Meister is saying brain slip or maybe mouse? Yeah, slip you can call it a brain slip, or, but it wasn't technical, uh, techni <laughs> technicalities. Technical yeah, yeah, so, uh, so I would call it a small mouse. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. But I mean, it's, it's good that he didn't see it because you went from losing in this move to completely winning on the next one. So knight c5, I guess, was, uh, was quite nice for you to see. And then you found the best yeah. taking this. It's a relief. Yeah uh for sure and uh yeah now you can take both ways i think probably taking with the queen is better as uh he might have some knight a4 here which is uh, making him able to trade the queens um mm -hmm. or it, it's at least possible maybe you can still go queen e5 and sorry a5 and pin the knight but it's uh it's unnecessary i think queen takes is just simply a better move rook b1 is uh probably decent here um, but he is. I was uh, very unsure at this point to take with the queen or the rook. That was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you for mean, you, it's probably like obvious. Here? You mean around here, like yeah, exactly there. Yes. Uh, next move now. I, I was uh, considering taking with rook instead of the queen, but uh, yeah. I don't know the correct answer. But I thought uh, still thinking the queen is the best, right? Yeah, I think the queen is the best. Um, well, I mean, taking with the rook allows uh, your other rook to swing over and join the attack, which is yeah. the advantage. But I mean, maybe white has, has knight a4. Um, I would guess objectively, maybe taking with the rook is better. Um, but practically, okay. it's just it's just easier to take with the queen. Um, okay. So, so this move is completely fine um, because mm -hmm. you're still uh, attacking white here and should be uh, should be winning. So rook g1, and now, yeah, I like this move, rook a8. Maybe you have something more direct, but rook a8 is uh, preparing some uh, tricks, and also it's uh, bringing uh, or getting ready to bring your other rook to b8. So I think that's a good move. You can also be a bit more direct, I think, with queen a5. And, uh, well, if the king goes to b2, you can go bishop c4, exploiting the pin here. And... Uh, yeah, something like knight a4 is, of course, very risky always uh, to, to put your knight in the same uh, uh, file as the king. And something like bishop b5 or rook b4, anything like this should be should be very good to gang up on this knight. Um, but rook a8 is also good. Now king b2, mm -hmm. ro now rook fb8, as we were talking about. Knight a4, queen d, uh, d4 is a very strong move. And now after queen c3, um, you had another uh, possibility here. Just at, at, at this point, I had a very short time. I was, I think I was... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you were down to like... Uh, yeah, we can actually see the time here. So it's one minute. Yeah, it was still one minute. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I so uh, you're more... still in time to, to make some precise uh, yeah, moves, so that... but mm -hmm. you can also play a lot of moves here that will all win. But at this point, you have a, a winning tactic. So, uh, are you there's, to find a, there's a mate here, right? There's not a mate, but you can win a piece at least. 
Mm. So it's um, a theme that we've already talked about with this. Game yeah, yeah, of course. Too. You can take the night uh, for free. A free lunch on A4. Free lunch on A4, exactly. And uh, that makes the winning task a bit easier. It's also threatening to go bishop c4, picking up another piece because mm. of uh, the pin once again. It's just, uh, yeah. Should I spotted that? With one minute, that should be enough for spotting that one. Yeah, it should be enough. But I mean, uh, your attack is still very strong. So it's not really changing the evaluation of the position very much. But yeah, it, it's a missed opportunity uh, again. So um, yeah, queen f2, king a3. I think white should try to repeat. But of course, then there is queen d4 again. And you might, uh, you might find queen takes a4 the second time. So maybe that's uh, what white thought. And here he spent a lot of time. Um, and then you ended up going queen a7, which is probably a good move. But you can also... I uh, uh, used a lot of time because I thought there was a mate here, but I didn't manage to see it. Ah, okay. Yeah, so actually um, here uh, in this kind of situation for a blitz game, I would just suggest uh, making some kind of move um, that looks decent because... You have a lot of good moves, um, but it's not easy to find a direct win or a mate, even though you're very close. So if you start looking for direct wins, uh, you might just end up uh, losing or, yeah, just not having enough time and yeah. uh, having like 10 seconds so left. And then you will start making uh, bigger mistakes. So here it's yeah. better just to make some simple moves like bishop b5 or maybe try to double the rooks, something like this. Queen a7 is also good, but if you see one good move, then just play it when you have, like, uh, yeah, one minute on the clock. Um, but it's easier said than done, of course, But you, because you always want to find... But, uh, but that uh, is one of my weaknesses, I think. I, uh, yeah, I think you spotted mm -hmm. one uh, exactly there, because uh, I was mm -hmm. starting to look for the direct win, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, this could, is... Uh, uh, it's very tempting, be very... but... Yeah, yeah because it's, it's so easy to get uh, low on time once you do this, because... Um, Quite often there there won't be a direct win, um, yeah. but Queen A7 is a good move I think because it prepares mm -hmm. Bishop B5, which uh, seems to win this piece here. And Queen yeah. takes C6 is probably a blunder as we discussed because you have uh, instead of Rook C8 you can go Bishop B5, and um, oh. yeah, in order to protect this knight on A4, White has to go Queen C2, and now there just has to be something uh, I guess. Queen e7 is very close to uh, to picking up this knight, um, but there should also be uh, be something else. I would be very surprised if if you can't win this knight somehow. Even bringing uh, this final piece into to the attack somewhere uh, around here should be enough because mm -hmm. this knight is just in uh, what I guess we call an uh, eternal pin. It can never get out. The king actually has to stay and and protect this as well as these pieces. So this is uh, yeah not a good sign. But this mm. this should be very good. Uh, but of course, I mean, you can you can make some uh, not so precise moves and still be winning here because White's king is just so exposed. The problem now is that you spent so much time trying to uh, to find this win, yeah. and uh, now it's not so easy because of the time situation. Um, but but it's, handle... it's just as you say, when the king is so exposed, you're starting to look for the direct uh, mate. But uh, yeah. yeah, that did exist as you know. So yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, now you're low on time, but I think you handled this situation uh, quite well because now you find some precise, you found some precise moves with uh, um, not so much time, and then you were able to get a winning position anyway. So bishop c4. Uh, thanks, Roman. Nice to see you too. Okay, so king b2 is a big mistake because now you can take and, and take on a4 as as you saw. Uh, during the game, but already here, I think it's very difficult because once this bishop disappears, this knight is also falling. Um, so it might just be close to losing after uh, after bishop c4. Um, and this also makes sense to trade the pieces around the king when the king is this open because it will just mean that he has less defense. And as uh, we pointed out here, after king takes b3, it would be mate in two, as you probably saw as well. So white has to try something different and played knight c5. Yeah, and this is uh, the moment I talked about where it's maybe a good idea to, to play it simple. I mean, here it's, of course, very tempting to go queen a2, so I think this is good at the moment. But later on, when you can't find the win, then just take the piece and, and it should be much easier to play this position practically. Uh, but queen a2, 
king c3, queen c2, yeah, all of this is fine. Uh, I mean, maybe you have some direct kind of uh, a mate, but it's really not. That uh, it's impo almost impossible to think that it's not a mate at this stage. Yes. So that uh, king is like yeah, completely in line of fire for everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it really seems like there should be mates, but it's uh, surprising how often the king can just run around and, <laughs> and survive. I think I do see a mate here, but it's uh, by no means an easy one. So... Yeah, as uh, Jokke Meister has pointed out, Rook D8 should be very strong. I was also thinking about this move, where on this you can go Rook takes C5, which is a nice tactic, and this uh, is going to be mate here after Knight D7. Oh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that is That's not so nice. easy to see, and also he can try uh, maybe Knight D3. Although, Many less. Yeah, although this, nice. this should still be good enough after Rook D8, so... You have a bunch of tactics, but if you can't find them, then it's best to just uh, do something simple uh, and yeah. not lose on time. So let's see here. Yeah, queen c4, king e3. Yeah, and this is, once again, the moment uh, I was talking about. Maybe just taking this or even going bishop c2 first, just saving the bishop, attacking the rook, and then you will take the knight on the next move. Uh, okay. But of course, tempting to, to keep checking here. Um, yeah, knight h5. And now, once again, the king is just kind of running away. And even though it seems exposed, it's not easy to, to mate it here. And and once again, I think you should just save the bishop now uh, at this point, like bishop c4 or something. Uh, yeah. Or maybe not here. Give a check first so that you save the knight. Uh, but now it's it's probably time to, to move this, this bishop away. Um Queen f6 is uh, is fine, but now white can take this, and it's actually not that easy anymore. So, um, yeah, white played this move, which is not so great, because uh, it's just defending this, and once again, you have the chance to move this extra piece away. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, uh, you didn't have enough time, and uh, you ended up losing on time. So it's easy to forget the time. Yeah. Once you're down to, like, five seconds, you have to just play something immediately all the time, and this is exactly. why it's so hard. So that, so that was the problem. And the king yeah. ex escaped. I, I thought I was quite sure there was no uh, escape routes in the end, but uh, it, it unfortunately it was. As you said, uh, you can get quite surprised how the king escapes sometimes. Yeah, uh, we have some nice comments in the chat here. The great king march, march, Kongens Knight <laughs> is also, yeah, uh, is also the true. description. So um, <laughs> yeah, uh, not easy to get to this king. Um, but at least now uh, maybe this uh, is something you can think about in the next game if you're uh, winning once again. So, um, Try. yeah, we can actually just uh, start the second game if uh, you don't have any more question for or questions for this one. Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready. All right. Then Try to remember just, uh, some of some of it. Yeah, and then you can probably just... not all of it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll yeah see. it's not we'll easy see. to remember all of it, but just taking some tips and remembering okay. them is is already uh, helpful. So I, I go on mute now and then yes. I'll just touch. Sounds good. Okay. So I will spectate. See you in a bit. Yeah. See you soon. All right. So then we will be having a look at his second game once it starts. Um, who's talking in the background? It is. Philip, also known as Philidorf, playing now. He is uh, going to be getting a lecture today, or he's playing some games, and I'm commenting on them while he's playing, and then um, talking to him about the games after that. So uh, let's have a look at this opening. Yeah, c5 is not the most common, but white should go uh, d5 to get some space. Uh, this is also fine. Now the queen is very early out on h4, but this can actually be nice in some cases because you can go like uh, knight c3, not knight c2, that would be illegal. Yeah, knight c3 is what he played. And now like bishop g5 or even h6, and you can castle long and try to play for some kind of weird um, attack early on. It's not fun losing on time. Very true. That's never fun. I've done that in a lot of games myself, even in classical. And uh, it's it's not a very good feeling, that's for sure. Okay, so now I already like White's position because he has um, he has uh, stopped Black from castling simply, uh, and uh, this is uh, not a good sign for Black. So he has to be careful now. 
And now it's up to White to decide if he wants to castle long, which is the more aggressive approach. But he can also, of course, just play it safe, something like g3, bishop g2, and castling this way instead, which also seems uh, very good. So um, I think this is what he's going to go for. Probably bishop uh, g2 is to be expected now. Okay, this is also fine, just to stop black from castling, making sure that he can never do this later on. Uh, now he just has to go back. There aren't a lot of options here, so he went back. Now the only problem is black can try to be annoying with something like takes. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the queen g7 move, because even though it uh, forces black to move the rook, it loses two tempos, which is... Um, something that you um, really never want to do in the opening. So you want to uh, develop your pieces, of course, and get your king to safety. And um, here, white is now a little bit behind because of this, and black is now castled um, the other way, just like in, in the last game. Here it seems a bit more safe, but I think, once again, uh, black's king could easily end up in trouble if white does something like knight d5 eventually. Knight e5 seems like a pretty good move. Because I don't think white should take it. It opens up for black's rook and gives black even more initiative here. Um, although even that is fine. You can take and go like queen c2, but I, I would prefer not to take it. Um, so yeah, b3 is fine. Uh, maybe rook c1 next, or of course castles is, is not a bad idea. And now this is actually not so common, but uh, here, yeah, taking with the pawn should be better because... With this bishop on g2, this pawn structure is quite nice, even though the pawns are doubled. And uh, now white can castle and go f4 eventually, and this is, uh, I think, quite good for white. Even though it's um, equal materially and quite uh, a slow position at the moment. Hello to you. Oh, nah, I think is your name. Okay, so... Um... Let's see what black does. The time situation is quite equal. Black is up uh, half a minute here. So let's hope he uh, he doesn't get into, into time trouble uh, once again here. It will uh, probably happen eventually, but maybe he can get a good position before that. So now, uh, yeah, knight d5 is probably good, although I think he has to take with the queen after, uh, after black takes, because taking with the pawn, even though it's uh, a discovered attack, the king can actually just move away and it's not uh, leading to very much. And the pawn on d5 would be blocking our bishop as well. So I think, uh, okay, this is a mistake from black. He probably thought that the discovered attack was troubled. So now white can take on e7 and, and get a fork. So let's hope he finds that. Um, okay, so he found it. Very good. He will probably take the rook. And then f4, I guess. Maybe rook d1 or rook e1 is even more simple. Funny comment here from Haider, I think. <laughs> okay, so um, now I like uh, queen g5 uh, because um, queen g5 is, is protecting the pawn first and, and also... It is uh, trying to trade the queen, which is something we want to do when we're leading uh, by material. Uh, so this is now more simple uh, for white to convert, I think. I wasn't sure about taking this pawn here, but it uh, ended up being fine. And yeah, he found this, this queen g5 move. Okay, so the game is over. And uh, that was a really nice win, I think. So let's go through it. Let's see if he's, uh, he's going back or coming back yes, hello i'm yes, back hello. back in business yeah all right that was a very good game um so thank we'll, you we'll still have a look yeah through. took your chips yeah <laughs> very good so uh there <laughs> was one moment where i wasn't sure about your decision to go queen g7 and queen h6 but we'll get to that okay so the light has gone again this uh, happens every yeah, time I, I think i just have to make some movements and it should be fine but it's yeah it's still all right at the moment so, yeah, c5. Actually, uh, I was talking about this opening. And uh, against c5, you can, uh, you can actually go d5, which gives you a space advantage quite early on here. And uh, you follow up with either c4 or e4, go knight c3, and the position is quite promising. Um, but, of course, you can do, uh, you can do some other uh, 
moves, of course, uh, as well. So c4 is fine, although this kind of uh, helps Black a bit because he can now take and get some easy development. Like, uh, so that was a, a bad start, actually. Yeah, um, it's it's not very bad. It's just that you can punish this opening more um, by going d5. Uh, and this is probably what you should do. But um, this is also fine. And I liked uh, the idea of going uh, queen to h4. Yeah, I was thinking a bit, actually, uh, that move. Yeah, yeah because um, it's quite common once the queen gets attacked to just go somewhere like, um, I don't know, queen d1 back, and then you will have just lost some time. Black will go knight f6 and have a uh, uh, lead in development, quite simply, and yeah. do something like this. And I'm not sure if this is uh, so great uh, for you. So queen h4 is much more interesting, and... Um, it gives some attacking uh, potential here because you can do it exactly as you did in the game, bring the knight out to c3 and, and go with uh, the bishop to, for example, g5. And mm -hmm. um, the queen is, uh, even though it's very early out here and uh, seems a bit exposed, it's very hard to attack it. So it's probably well placed here. Knight f6, knight c3, this is all uh, quite logical, I think. Maybe black should uh, not go for g6, but instead play e6, since your queen is on h4, and try to put the bishop here, which might be more annoying for you to face than g6, because this kind of helps you, uh, considering what you're trying to do. So e6, uh, and yeah, something like bishop g5 now, then black can go here, and after castling, maybe he can get away with a6, uh, sorry, h6, and... Um, it might be uh, annoying to face uh, this move because you don't okay. uh, necessarily have somewhere great to put your bishop. But he played g6, which is also quite logical, but now uh, you get to play more or less what you want. Uh, actually, um, maybe going bishop g6, uh, sorry, h6 here is uh, best to do immediately because then you're making sure that black cannot castle. Um, once you play knight f3 first, and after this, then you go bishop h6. Now, black can castle, um, and uh, he uh, won't be having that much trouble. You can actually still try some some tricky ideas with, like, knight g5 and even knight d5 uh, pretty soon to try to get this knight away, and then you can take here and give checkmate if he falls for, falls for that trick. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh -huh. I think you're not uh, developed enough here to, to try for this. And probably black has some some way of solving that issue. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyway, it's like quite if you good go, trick, so, yeah. yeah, it's it's a nice trick in in these positions. Once you have uh, against the fianchetto bishop, when you have uh, your bishop on h6 and the knight on g5, this is quite nice. Um, and it's also very yeah. hard to black uh, for black to get out of this sort of uh, setup because yeah, if we just have a look at this again, if black ever takes, then you just take and. It's the same problem, the knight can never move. Um, and there's really not much else black can do to get any of the these pieces away. Uh, so this could be uh, an annoying idea. And of course you can, as white, at any point take on g7 if, if you're uh, getting ready to remove this knight on f6. But the whole point is just this knight cannot move, then you win immediately. And this is uh, something black has to really watch out for. So, so the only defense uh, in this only defense in this situation would be for his uh, bishop to retreat, right, on uh, h8. Uh, you mean like uh, around here? Uh, how, how how do black defend uh, this, uh, okay, so, against uh, this trick? Or yeah, if we're talking about defense for black here, I think um, probably something like uh, okay, knight g5. I think black can go d6, and it just feels too early to go for knight d5 because probably black can get his own attack with queen a5. And if you don't play knight d5 now, then black can go bishop e6 and always, uh, sorry, maybe not bishop e6 because you might be able to take, but worst worst case scenario, bishop e6. And if white takes, you take back and there's- not can, you just, uh, can you just take his bishop now? Bishop, oh no, oh, I see, like he, he defends- uh... Yeah, so this knight is- Oh no, he's, um, I thought you could take on g7 and then attack with a mate, but uh, I see he's uh -huh. defended with okay. his. So. Yeah. No. yeah, because the knight is still here, this is the problem. So I think black uh, is, uh, is yeah, like barely surviving, but it's it's very interesting because, um, yeah, maybe you can still go like knight d5 or knight e4. But I think the problem is, as I mentioned, queen, queen here. And if the rook gets to move away, then 
White is never giving checkmate, just winning the pawn on h7. And uh, some checks. Yeah, knight e4 is being suggested here. Um, but then I think once again this move, and you either have to retreat the knight or you have to go king d1. And now I think rook d8, and you can actually... Uh, or actually, let's see... Yeah, black has to be careful here. Um, this might be too risky. Yeah, because now it should be winning for white after this move. So uh, let's see. Robot voice. That's, uh, yeah, maybe not so good. We can we can try to hear from the rest of the chat. Can we hear Philidorf well, or is it difficult to hear his voice? Okay, get, gotta get Maybe I am a robot. So. Yeah, maybe you are a robot. Who knows? Um, Who knows? Okay, so um, yeah, as, as it's being pointed out in the chat here, you need to have um, a proper foundation and having your own uh, king safe before going for the attack, I would say, um, in most cases. So even though I didn't um, refute this idea very well here, I think it's just too risky to do this kind of thing. And black should really have some sort of a defense here. And if he has, then then why should be losing with this king in the center? All right. I see. <laughs> so, but yeah, anyway, uh, a really interesting uh, idea. And um, we can look at what's happened in the game. But as I said, uh, probably bishop uh, h6 immediately is even stronger because this makes sure that black can never go bishop g7 and castling, which means that black cannot castle at all. Uh, let's see, back to normal. A bit loud, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, let's just uh, see what happens with the sound and you, you can keep us updated chat. Okay, h6. Uh, <laughs> after knight takes f6. Okay, yeah, h6 in that position is probably possible. Uh, maybe that saves the day for black. And if that's the case, then black should be winning because of the king in the center. Cash is talking about this position where maybe h6 is a great defensive move. Uh, and now two knights are under attack. And it seems like you can't do something uh, or anything great here with uh, with white, which means black should win back one of the knights at least. And white has the king in the middle of the board, which means it should be good for, for black. So that must have been just uh, at least one of the, the ways to play this for black. But let's continue uh, with the game here. Uh, he took, which uh, is also not great for him because now he's not able to castle. D6. Yeah. Now uh, I was uh, talking about uh, either going for castling this way or trying to go uh, either E3 or G3 and developing the bishop and castling short. I think your decision to castle short is the best because the king is actually quite open on C1 since you've played C4. Yeah. Uh, it so... looks a bit ballsy going for a long... Uh... Yeah, I think oh. it's a bit too much. So uh, it's better just to, to play it calmly uh, with uh, with G3 here. And also g3 should be better than e3 since the bishop on g2 is very nicely placed in this kind of position. So I think g3 is the best move. Now bishop g4. And um, at uh, at this point, um, I wasn't sure about going queen g7 because if you just play something simple like bishop g2 and you castle on the next move, uh, then... Um, your position is quite simply uh, better. And I guess you were afraid that black would somehow um, be able to castle. So, I mean, queen g7 was the idea that you were going to force the, the rook to move and then go back and he can't castle at all, or what was uh, the idea? Yeah, I had it in the back of my mind, but first, foremost, I was uh, looking for um, uh, a direct attack on his rook. Uh, Gambling on uh, probably overlooking it, uh, but okay. and I know as a side effect, if he don't overlook it, he will move his rook and then be not able to castle. So I thought it was a win-win. Okay. okay, it makes sense. Small um, threat uh, yeah. with a combination of uh, taking away his casting. Yeah. Okay. Now, now all of the lights are going here, but um, yeah. Okay. Now it's back. That's good. So um, the reason why I think this is a slight mistake is because you lose two moves by doing this and uh, you don't really have time for that in the opening uh, usually um, especially since you're already like slightly behind in development so you should just go for bishop g2 uh -huh. castle have a safe king and black can still not castle because there's no way he's getting your queen away from h6 here and uh, 
castling is illegal, of course, when the queen is on h6. So um, yeah. this is uh, sort of uh, a move that doesn't... Uh, uh, ask you a question on this. Yeah. Yes, of course. This position, could uh, could it be a good idea to go uh, with the bishop to h3? Force uh, exchange? Yeah, maybe. The only problem with this is that he can take, and now he is able to castle, because your queen is not on h6. And then also, yeah. uh, a good rule is that when you've played g3, um, you really want to have uh, your bishop on g2, because... Uh, when it's there, it's it's a really nicely placed piece, um, but um, when it's not there, it's actually just weakening to have played this g3 move with uh, some, yeah, I see. some weakness. I get your point, yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. For example, you can actually see this very well demonstrated with uh, with Black's weaknesses here. He has uh, Fiancato, his bishop, ended up uh, trading it off, and now he has weaknesses around here, which means he cannot castle. Um, mm. All right, so continue. you would keep the queen on uh, that uh, spot and uh, yeah, develop other pieces? I would keep the queen on h6 because it's already uh, annoying there and black cannot castle. And um, after uh, bishop g2 you can castle and, and you have a really good position. So it's best always to just move, you know, um, try to get out all the pieces before you, you do something fancy, usually. Um, okay. And... Okay, back to double voice and back to single. That means it's good now, so let's hope it stays like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so this is what's happened. And yeah, as uh, Mr. Volsom has pointed out, black can still castle long, which means you're... Yeah, this is probably what he would do anyways. And then you've just lost uh, a couple of moves here. Queen b6 is a strong move. And now queen d2 is really good because you've already make, made sure that uh, black cannot castle short. And now you need your queen in the defense before um, before suddenly black is getting something dangerous going here. Because the queen is not really doing much on h6 other than stopping black from castling. Uh, and now black cannot castle that way any anyway. So, uh, so yeah, queen d2 is a good move. Uh, and here I was thinking that he should probably take and try to play for something direct uh, since you're uh, not fully developed at the moment. Something like knight e5 is possible. Um, putting pressure on both pawns and, of course, directly attacking this one. And you have to do something yeah. like this and maybe queen c6. I mean, they're just ideas, but it seems uh, logical to play for direct yeah. moves once uh, once white is a bit behind uh, in development. And, and also, uh, black is probably happy to double the pawns in some cases. Especially... That looks very sharp, actually, because at my level and in Blitz, you could uh, very easy to overlook a fork like yeah. that. Yeah, you could easily go wrong here. Uh, yeah. So maybe that was a better way for him to play. But castling long, of course, is, is not uh, terrible either. Bishop g2, uh, of course, is a good move. Knight e5. And here I also liked your, your move b3. Uh, I guess you can maybe go rook c1 as well, and, and this pawn on c4, I guess, can't be taken because of, of stuff like a knight d5 or something. Um, but it's uh, much simpler just to protect it like this, so I think that's fine as well. Um, yeah, as I talked about uh, when you had this position, I probably wouldn't take this because it sort of helps black once again, and you have to spend even more time moving your queen around. And black can maybe double or something uh, in the default before you're able to do that much. So yeah, b3 takes. And now taking with the pawn is very important. Um, or of course, you could take with the bishop as well. It's just much better to take with the pawn because then you keep this a strong bishop. And you can castle and go f4 or something like that uh, to open up for it again. So bishop f5 castles. Yeah, h5. Black is trying to, to go for some sort of attack. Rook c1 is good. Actually, if you want to stop this attack, um, quite often mm. you can just go h4 with this structure and uh, black shouldn't be able to create anything now. Especially if, if you're maybe also able to go f4 without weakening this square too much. Mm. Alright, but rook c1 is uh, a bit faster, so I think this is uh, even better. Because h4 is not like... It's not going to be a very dangerous attack exactly. He, he might take and open the uh, control, but you just take back. A bit more de defensive, probably. But... 
Yeah. Um, so I think Rook C1 is better just because you want to get the attack going as fast as possible. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Bishop D7 uh, should be fine. Yeah, and now... Uh, in, a, in, in a long game, I probably would go more defensive with the h4, but uh, I see in these split games, I like to just uh, crunch the center. Sorry, what did you say? That... No, in a, in a long game, a classical, I would probably go more like h4, like you said, with a pawn defense, yeah. but in this position blitz, I'm uh, quite uh, sure about attacking the center. Okay, yeah, I think this is a good idea. Also, h4, uh, as I mentioned, probably isn't a big threat, and your attack is faster, so I think it's correct to do this. Uh, okay, so um, Void0 is asking why rook c1 is good. The reason why rook c1 is good is because it's just uh, simply getting uh, the rook into a more active square, and it's more developed here. And it's also in the same file as, as Black's King, which could prove useful yeah. in a lot of cases. That For, what was my main motivation, actually, the King attack. Yeah, the King, exactly. And you can maybe go something like Knight A4 next, followed by C5, and this could give something uh, um, dangerous immediately. Queen C6 looks nice instead of Bishop F5. Let's see. Okay, Queen C6 is a creative move, um, but I think White can just defend. The pawn and now castles is going to be next and then you're starting to give some threats again also queen e3 is attacking this pawn and there's even stuff like knight b5 um giving uh, some threats of forking the queen but still a nice idea because uh it's um sort of winning two tempos but then losing them back later on so um let's go back to this position here yeah knight d5 um looks like a really strong move because it seems like a bad idea to take it since then you will probably take with a pawn i guess this was your idea and then give a check uh with a discovery attack um the problem however well uh by the way uh just quickly was your idea to take with the pawn or the uh, exactly as you said those uh just uh was looking like uh, attempting to do the um, do my check yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, I didn't calculate it, so I just uh, was it was just my uh, feeling. Yeah, it's it's a very tempting move since you take back with a check and it looks like uh, it's dangerous. You're opening up the C file for your rook. The problem is just that the king simply moves and now black will probably go rook c8 next. And uh, the black king is actually very safe. Black is also fighting back for the C file. You have suddenly an isolated pawn on d5, and your bishop is kind of blocked suddenly because your own pawn on d5 is blocking it. So uh, it's a very tempting move, especially in blitz, but probably a positional mistake. Um, so this is why uh, knight d5 is maybe not the best. And instead of this, I guess rook e1 is nice just to get this into play and attacking this pawn. And then yeah. let's say black defends it with. Rook I was actually considering that uh, as well. Okay, yeah, and now yeah. Um, f4 looks quite strong to get uh, the bishop into play. And now you might be able to go knight e, uh, d5 again and maybe take with uh, with the bishop back, starting to attack his pawn chain. Uh, but I think this position is really nice for white. You just have to uh, to make sure that all of your pieces are, are joining and that you're not blocking your bishop. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so... Black should definitely have uh, taken this knight because, um, yeah, even even if uh, white takes with the queen, which should be better, um, black uh, is not doing too badly. And after going, doing anything else and taking on d5, then he is going to blunder on e7. So this is what happened. And I think that your uh, technique was very good once you found this move. Uh, did you see this move immediately since you were thinking for a few Yeah, I was, but I was just checking for if there was any more uh, more dangerous. Yeah, okay. As, uh, usually when there's a uh, very obvious uh, fork, the, I know that there could be something more sometimes. Uh, mate or something so i just had to look, double check yeah this is actually uh, a very very nice way of thinking and and when you said that i actually think i found something stronger so chat can you find mm -hmm. something better than knight takes e7 this will be the tactic for now mm. okay so turbo has pointed out b4 which is correct and the queen has no good squares. 
the only oh, available shit. square, uh, the only available square is actually uh, Queen C6, which runs into this fork instead. Um, so. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, and taking taking this doesn't help. We take the queen. So oh. um, this was a very good point, uh, Philip, and uh, I think you just uh, gave us all a lesson there that it's good to look for stronger moves. Um, oh. But of course, the move. But then, and then, then that, and then I got lazy and just <laughs> took that. <laughs> bit, so. Yeah, it it would have yeah. been uh, cooler if you you actually played the move yourself. But still, a really nice yeah. principle. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, that's that's always a good thing to know that we we shouldn't play the the tempting moves too quickly. Okay. All right, so knight takes e seven, and now you won the exchange. So still, this this should be good enough. Uh, rookie one is good, and of course uh, you can whenever you want uh, maybe switch uh, the rook over here and attack this pawn, but rookie one is also good. Yeah, here I would probably prefer not to take since it ruins your pawn structure and opens up your king, um, but since you have this queen g5 idea, it's it's still very good for you. But also something like rook d1 is pretty good. Now he probably what? has to. Sorry, did you say uh, something? How do you defend in this, uh, this against this pawn? Because I guess if it comes to uh, h3, it doesn't look very good uh, either. Yeah, so the thing is, um, a pawn on h4 can, can often look quite annoying, but actually it doesn't do that much, because if it advances, we just simply move the bishop either to f1 uh, or even to h1, and then we go f4 uh, later on, um, getting this bishop into play again. Uh, the point is just, even though it looks uh, like this pawn is uh, is placed well and attacking our king, um, we could just, uh, yeah, we're, we're very safe uh, having this bishop here and, and all the pawns around the king, so it's not a big uh, concern. And then if he takes, it's just basically a simple trade. He opens up the A file, sorry, the H file, but it's uh, it's not going to be very dangerous, at least not immediately here. And you have your own uh, ideas of taking this. Even if queen was not trapped, it doesn't hurt to play b4 intermezzo. Very true. It doesn't. As long as you don't let black uh, get away from uh, his problems somehow, then of course b4 uh, doesn't hurt at all. So, uh, taking on h4, rook g8, queen g5. Yeah, this is also a very strong move, as, as I talked about uh, uh, on the stream. So, uh, here I think black is... Uh, starting to to lose hope because there isn't uh much chance here to to avoid trading the queens and once the trade sorry the queens are traded um then it should be very simple um so takes takes and uh yeah the knight should probably go here to try to get here but after rookie seven it's uh, starting to look really bad although i think it's still a bit early for black to resign because he can go bishop e6 um, which defends his bishop and defends his pawn. And your rook is kind of trapped here, and there is some hope to try to, like, get around here and start bugging it. And also, you know, it's blitz, it's just an exchange. Um, a lot of things can happen. So, yeah, you know, you can get low on time or you can make a blunder. Um, an exchange is usually not enough to, to resign in blitz, or even in classical I would play on here with black because there's always some hope because uh, as chess players, we always make mistakes, even in, in very clearly winning positions, we all do that. So um, yeah. there's just no reason to, to resign too early. I, I guess on, on, uh, on the internet, when we play games uh, all the time, it's more tempting to, to just resign and, and get on with the next game. Um, but in general, if there is some reason to try to win this game, uh, it's it's a good idea to to play on and see if you can uh, trick your opponent somehow or just wait for a blunder. There's no reason not to do it because you're you're losing either now or or later on. So uh, also it's actually a good way of uh, of practicing how to uh, defend bad positions because this is also a good uh, a good thing to know. Okay, f4 is strong, true, um, and now white. Uh, is probably breaking through, but at least then black should wait for um, wait for this move. And uh, yeah, it looks what, very what, what's the idea about f four? The f four idea is just to open up for the bishop and, and trying to continue with the. Attack. Yeah, of course. So f four is really mm -hmm. strong. Um, 
<laughs> but at least then then black could wait for for this move uh because it's not necessarily an easy move to find um oh, but anyway that was um, quite nice yeah still still a, a good game this one and uh yeah convincing win so we can move on to the next one i think we should have time for uh, for one more so yeah. whenever you're ready unless you have any more questions uh you can just start the next one and uh, mute yourself and already see i'm making progress yeah so that's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay i'm ready should i uh, okay. just go um yeah so i'll see if i can find the game I'm guessing he has muted himself now. Let's see if he's started a new Yes, game. I'm going to oh, Okay, now. you're going to do it now. Okay. So, yeah, whenever you're ready, you can start the next game. Okay, so we have started with a new game here. He has Black against Richie 1904. Let's see what happens. It's um, kind of the same opening as in the first game just um, without this f3 stuff um and yeah this is actually um an important moment because i think bishop f5 is too early in in this uh particular situation because white has some some early queen b3 stuff which could be annoying but we'll have a look at that in the analysis afterwards okay so let's see what happens now it just seems like um some pretty normal stuff and uh both players are developing. Black's plan should, uh, yeah, now at least he should save his bishop. But uh, later on, he wants to go bishop d6 and castle, and then probably see what happens here. I think bishop e4 should be best here, and this is what he plays. Um, to try to trade off those bishops, as we talked about before, you want to, to keep your fianchetto bishop. This is why white goes f3, which is probably a good decision as well. Or actually... Um, it was a blunder. Let's see if we can find this afterwards. Okay, can't early queen b3 be met with queen b6? Yes, it can, but this also has a problem because white can quite often go uh, either c5 or c takes d5. We'll, we'll get to this uh, later on once we have a look at the game. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, black... Uh, let's see, was this a blunder or did I just overlook something? Okay, never mind. This was not a blunder. So we'll get to that later on anyway. Okay, so now we have some interesting stuff going on here. Um, White has a pretty strong center here on the bishop pair, but he also has uh, an open file against his king um, with this rook being on h8. So um, yeah, it's a, a double-edged position, but I think taking on, on e4 was... Not the best decision because this opens up for white's rook and there could be trouble on the f file. But e5, however, is a very strong move because it stops white from going e5 and, and opening up this file. And it also blocks his bishop. So e5 is, uh, is a very good move for sure. And now I think you can also go queen b6, which looks very annoying. Um, putting pressure on this pin and also attacking Oops, against b2. Okay, he didn't find this. But um, he should still be doing all right. I guess he's hoping for queen takes. Okay, he did it. And now he has bishop c5. Okay. So um, now he won the queen very early on. Unless, um, yeah, there isn't anything here. So I think that should be uh, enough. Although white will maybe play a few more moves. We will see. Okay, so he took it. And now he'll probably try e5. But then there is queen d4 check, which uh, should be enough to see uh, the resignation there. Okay, especially after b4, because then there's queen d4 winning the rook as well. We'll see what he does. Maybe he moves the knight. That's also fine, of course. You can do a lot of things when you're up a queen. Okay, so he found queen d4. I'm guessing he's going to take the rook. He didn't have to, actually. He could have moved the knight as well, and the rook was trapped. But Okay, so he won very quickly there. All right, uh, let's just, uh, I guess this is going to be kind of, yeah, that was a, very, was a free lunch, right? Very quick, yeah, exactly, free lunch, quick win. Always nice to get uh, the quick wins. Especially, yeah, uh, I'm telling you, I'm making progress, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 so the first game was, uh, ended up being a loss, but now you're learning and uh, now we have two wins. Exactly. So this is a good sign. So soaking it in. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, c6, uh, I guess this is just a different move order of uh, 
of getting into this kind of uh, stuff. I don't know if there's any problems with this move. I think it's fine if you're okay with Karo Khan, Karo Khan, isn't it? Yeah, if you're fine with playing the Karo Khan, then yeah, there's there's not a problem. Do you play this yeah. normally against E4? Uh, actually, yes. It's yeah. probably a bad habit. But, uh, no, no, I play it myself. I feel comfortable. <laughs> so uh, I think it's all right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's have a look at this opening at least because uh, there were some interesting moments here. Yeah, Bishop F5 is uh, is a uh, slightly risky move because in some cases, maybe not as much here, but especially if the knight is on C3 and, and the knight uh, on, on F, uh, sorry, G1, then white can go like yeah, Queen B3 very early on in this position and this uh, could be trouble. Uh, for example, if white um well queen b3 now is interesting but also taking on d5 first let's see commanding positions in every game only lost on time karo khan against d4 yeah i mean if white wants to play a karo khan he can go e4 and it will be the same but he can also go c4 and have a queen's gambit the tall variation yeah. for white um i'm guessing that's the the knight c3 g4 variation in the karo khan that you're talking about or something like this, some some sort of a crazy variation. Um, but okay, yeah, taking on d5. Now black will either take oh, back... Only heard a name. Sorry, have, you've heard uh, the variation? Well, I, I, I heard of the tell variation, but I don't know it. Mm. Yeah, me neither. I'm not sure what it is. Um, it might be some, some g4 or something. At least some aggressive stuff earlier on, I'm pretty sure, sure about that. But yeah, taking on d5... Um, Actually, I can show you this later on, uh, why we do this, but uh, queen b3 is, is generally the idea. And now we have uh, an attack against both pawns, so black will have to go here. And now we would like to take on d5 twice, um, but black has the in-between move, queen takes b3. And this is why we would like to take on b5, um, sorry, on d5 earlier on because this would already be the position and we would be able to take on d5, um, which wins a pawn. And um, well, there is still, um, as we talked about in the chat here a couple of minutes ago, there is c5. And I think this is still quite promising for white because he is in time to go like uh, b4, b5 before black gets his uh, desired setup. Because, um, well, actually, Maybe not actually, because here um, white is just about to, about to go uh, b5, but now black can move the rook and there are no pins or anything. So maybe black is surviving, um, but I would still prefer white in this kind of uh, position here generally. Um, but yeah, because of this, the correct move should be either knight c3 or taking on d5. And um, I think the only move here that doesn't get black into a lot of trouble is to actually take this knight first if I remember correct, remembering correctly, at least this is a variation without c6 and knight f3 uh, added in with those uh, pieces on the back rank. Uh, can still play b5 before knight c3. You mean in this position? Let's see. Let's see if we can find it. We're talking about this here. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you can do this and go knight c3 now if this was the idea. And now you have a double attack. Maybe this was the way to do it. But generally, this is uh, uh, yeah, just uh, a bit risky for black because it can quite often happen. And it's difficult to, to calculate the variation. But yeah, uh, nicely uh, pointed out. Let's see, take with the bishop. Uh, not sure about the exact moves that we're talking about here. By the way, also b5 might maybe be met by this unless there is this in-between move once again yeah hard to say but let's go to to the game here or as i was talking about taking this first if black now takes we see the point we now go queen b3 and there is this threat and the queen can't really move anywhere uh, or it can't go to b6 as in the previous example um, because we will take on d5 Let's have a look at the chat. Yeah, e5, bishop, f5, h4. Yeah, this is a very interesting variation and it's uh, quite popular nowadays. So uh, as a Karo Khan player myself, I have to be careful not to fall in, 
into any of the traps there. But yeah, it's a very, very um, dangerous variation. We won't be dis discussing that now because um, we don't have time for that, unfortunately. But we're going to have a look at this game. You can look at um, the tall variation yourself if you're interested in that. I would recommend that for uh, for players uh, playing both white and black in the Karo Khan. It's a very interesting variation. So um, yeah, here this is more uh, tricky for black to defend. No really good ways to uh, to defend this pawn. And white is quite simple play here, I would say. Um, so yeah. This is why you have to be a bit careful with going out with the bishop this early. And probably in this situation... There was a lot of things that I've never think, thought about, but uh, it's uh, quite yeah. decent points. I have to look this over uh, a couple of times, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um... It's not easy for white to punish this, but if white plays very precisely, you could run into trouble with uh, with the bishop being out too early since b7 is a, a bit of a weakness. Um, yeah. And this is why usually you want to go just e6, and then the, bish the bishop goes to b7 instead like this. And it's not a uh, badly placed. It looks like a bad idea to, to lock in this bishop behind the pawn chain, um, but you will almost always get it out somehow anyway, so it's, it's not a big problem. Um... But okay, let's have a look at the game. Okay, so take with bishop, pawn is pinned. I uh, thought the bishop was open. Yeah, okay, so you thought e3 had been played. Yeah, that would have been a different situation. Okay, so now we have quite a normal position. Uh, quite often, black will go bishop d6, castle, and maybe take on c4 at some point and try to go b5, which is quite similar to what we talked about before. Um, but it's also possible just to play it more solid and, and not taking on c4 if you want to be a bit more safe. Now, after knight h4, um, I was saying that I thought bishop e4 was a good move, and this is what you played. So I like that. Um, you can also go bishop g4, which is another way of trying to uh, um, trying to avoid losing the bishop for this knight, because you would prefer not to trade this this off, because that would give white the bishop pair even though black is still very solid and has an open h file when that happens. That's why you don't play the French, because you always worry about the light square bishop. Yeah, actually, in the French, uh, it is more of a problem, because the bishop actually gets kind of stuck, and it's difficult to get it out. Black has some active play for this uh, in the French, which means that it's still fine. Um, but yeah, the bishop is more of a problem in that variation. So... Um, yeah, bishop g4 also possible, but I like bishop e4 because usually f3 is more of a weakness uh, than a strength for white. And here I said that I thought he blundered because I thought you could take on b1 and take on, uh, sorry, go g5. But that would actually be a blunder um, um, by, uh, by black because white can just simply take it. So that was not a good idea. Yeah. Mm. Better to just go bishop g6 like you played. Um, and now, yeah, white took... Uh, to open up uh, for the rook. Yeah. Uh, the rook alre already looked a bit uh, pressing against his king. So uh, yeah, it uh, gave me uh, some a breath of uh, optimism. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, maybe I didn't mention this enough, but almost always uh, in this kind of uh, situation where you have uh, a piece to take back on g6 and you have to decide between those two pawns, almost always a good idea to take towards the center. Even if the rook is not on h8, when it's on h8, then you definitely want to take this way because it opens up for the rook. Uh, but in general, just taking towards the center is better. And also, if you take with the f pawn, you're going to be weakening a lot of uh, your position. Like e6 is suddenly weak, and those pawns are not great when they're on the edge like this. Um, so definitely take with the h pawn, uh, without a doubt. And now he took on d5, you took back e4. Yeah, here I was uh, I was not too sure about taking on, on e4 because he opens up for for his rook and all of that. But when you followed up with e5, it ended up, ended up just being very good. So I think that was a good way of solving it. As long as you already knew that you were going to play e5 after that, I think it was a very good way of playing. Uh, but if you just took this without finding the next move, then it's I guess you could call it a mistake. Um at least in in ways of thinking. I of course have plans of going further to e4. Sorry, you you have plans? <laughs> yeah. Of course I had plans of to, uh, to going e4. Okay, that's, I can't that's say good to anything hear. otherwise. Okay, <laughs> that's good to hear. Uh, 
So yeah, this is a, good a slight joke, but it's uh, also some serious because I, I think it actually was struck my mind. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna claim uh, the honor for the move. Uh, yeah, but in that sense, sounds but, sounds yeah. good enough. You had it in mind, uh, but generally, if yeah. if you didn't uh, want to play e5 in that position, you can also just leave this structure and go something like bishop e7 and try to develop. But of course. Um, it might be a bit annoying that you have to retreat this knight once again to somewhere passive like uh, I don't know, g8 or h7. Um, and then white probably follows up with f4 and tries to get an attack. So I think what you did in, uh, what you did in the game was better in terms of uh, getting your pieces out. So probably um, the best move. Mm -hmm. We can of course check this with the computer at any point, but uh, it's also good to do it without the computer and then check later on. I'll just have a look. Okay, so the computer says takes, takes, and yeah, e5. So very good. This was the best way of playing. And now maybe white should uh, go for d5 and, and have this passed pawn, but I think this is quite nice for black actually because you have uh, decent piece placement. Uh, white's bishop is kind of trapped, and um, white's king could get in trouble here very easily if you can uh, somehow get some more pieces to the h file and start sacrificing even. Um, okay. so yeah, uh, bishop g5 was also fine. And now I was suggesting to go queen b6 because I think objectively this should be the best move as it puts pressure um, on this pin, attacking the pawn, also attacking the pawn on b2. So this would be like very good whatever white does. White doesn't really have any defense here, I think. Um, your position should be better here, whatever he does. Um, but... What you played was also um, quite nice in terms of uh, blitz because it's very easy to, to make the mistake there. Um, because I guess you took care because you were hoping for queen takes and then you can go bishop c5, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, I think if white sees this and finds a more precise uh, move. Okay, so where does the black king go? True, the king is uh, the black king is in trouble. It has to get out of. Uh, I was, uh, uh, yeah. You mean uh, the pin, right, right? If the queen was taking, yeah, the yeah, pin I was mean, in the air. Oops. Yeah, no, that was my whole uh, whole idea. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Yeah, queen takes, and uh, now you have um, bishop c five, which is winning. But the point was that if White sees this, he probably plays a different move. And something like e5 here might be very dangerous because as uh, Cash has pointed out here, the black king is out in the open and um, once you start attacking it when it's in the middle, this could be really dangerous, especially considering that white has a lot of active pieces like the bishop on g5 is creating a pin here. This bishop is getting very active after like e5. The rook is open, the queen is open, so black could easily be in trouble here. Like let's say knight takes e5, you go bishop takes... Uh, b7 you might have to move this rook and even like queen a4 is possible or uh, let's say you move the bishop first or go rook e1 there is a bunch of moves here and they all look quite dangerous since the king is in the middle um so white had this chance to to maybe get a strong attack or at least not have a bad position and this could have been a different story but of course in a blitz game there's always that chance that he will fall for the tricks and um, that's sometimes worth uh, risking. Although generally I would say trying to find the very best moves is um, a better idea since then you will be sure that, uh, well, if your opponent sees your idea, then, then you won't have a bad position or uh, anything like that. You will be sure that you have quite a good position uh, anyway. But of course he did fall for that trick. Uh, in this case, which is one of uh, the cases where it's uh, very nice for you, of course. So bishop c5, anyone having issues with leeches? Maybe, I, I mean, this is fine at the moment, um, the leeches uh, here that I'm using. But maybe there are uh, some server error errors, I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, in this position, white should, I mean, it doesn't help very much, but white should try to at least take this to play for some tricks. Because, I mean, let's say you take with the knight, then you blunder, and, and this can be captured, and 
if you uh, take with the queen, then uh, the rook can take. And yeah, that's basically it. But also, it's nothing uh, wrong with resigning either. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. So also, um, yeah, this gives white two pieces. But the point is just after this, you just take back with a pawn, and now it's uh, it's uh, a queen for a bishop, and yeah, maybe time to resign here. Uh, I I will agree with that. There's not much hope, and then uh, if there is no hope, then yeah, then it's fine to resign, uh, of course uh let's see yeah but this happened and now anything uh should work for black especially when you you found this check on on d4 here that should be good enough or it was good enough already but especially now yeah. and yeah now he resigned so i think that was also a very good game i mean uh the opening is maybe the part that you can learn the most from because there were some interesting ideas for white when you move the bishop out too early so maybe being careful with that is a good idea. Um, yeah, and then after that, you you just went for uh, the sneaky move and it worked out. So um, that's that's always uh, nice when that happens. Um, I'm not sure if I have any more comments for this exact game, exact game, unless you have any questions. So um, yeah, uh, I guess we can just um, spend the last minutes uh, getting some questions from the chat, if you have any. We're going to finish in about, yeah, three or four minutes. So you can just uh, ask us anything if you want. Unless, of course, you had any more questions for the game, Philip. Yeah, I was, it was interesting uh, what you mentioned uh, with the bishop, because the typical Karakan bishop is supposed yeah. to up on uh, f5 right quite yeah. early on yeah so so but uh, the only problem was the um, um the order of the moves right you want if the knight would go out first on f3 or f6 sorry would that be better that would help a bit because then you're not losing material uh but the the yeah. big difference is that uh when when you're playing the queen's gambit when white has moved the C pawn, like this, it's a different story because then white has queen b3 ideas. In the Karo Khan, it's different because here, let's say something like this, it makes much more sense because this is just a nice move to make and you get the bishop out, you go e6 and c5, and there's no queen b b3 stuff that could be annoying at all. Um, I mean, maybe in some cases, like here, it could be annoying, but then it's anyway more uh, more uh, realistic to play something like this and knight c6 and maybe bring the bishop out later on. But even there in, in this variation, um, once black goes bishop uh, g4, white usually does this and goes queen b3. So it just demonstrates then that when the c-pawn isn't there, quite often um, moving the bishop out early could be met with uh, going out with the queen. Although this is sort of a theoretical line, which is not bad for black or anything like that. Okay, um, I will, uh, if that was a good way of answering the question, I will... Uh, yes, yes absolutely. I just yeah. uh, see, uh, I have to rerun this a uh, couple of times, uh, the whole Cairo Khan, actually, I have to rerun, so... Uh, yeah, okay, that's, that's probably uh, good, good points. A lot of <laughs> yeah, points. good yeah. points. Yeah, generally, the rule is just don't go bishop f5 too early against d4, c4, but you can do it against uh, e4, so the Cairo Khan. Okay, so we have some questions here. How did I, or what did I do to get to where I am in skill? How did I study? How did I learn? Okay, so um, that's a big question. I guess I would mainly say that um, what I've done is just generally always uh, spending a lot of time at chess, like no matter what kind of uh, studying or playing it is, I'm always spending uh, some time or even a lot of time on, uh, on chess. Um, and... Um, it could be playing games, doing tactics. Uh, it, it all depends on which level you're at because um, it will decide what you need to study. In. And also, of course, you might have some weaknesses and this means that you will have to study this. But generally, I would say, yeah, playing a lot of classical tournaments, you know, like uh, longer games uh, with uh, longer time controls and um, analyzing those games, you will... Uh, you will um, learn a lot from this, but also 
of course, other things like practicing other parts of the game. And uh, I would say like calculation is in general a very good thing to to practice because it helps in, in all uh, parts of the game. This is sort of the same thing as tactics, but calculation is maybe a bit uh, deeper that you have to see a bit further uh, or um, yeah, a, a few more moves ahead than just some, some easy tactics, but they both work. Uh, so for calculation, it's good to, to practice more difficult puzzles that might take some time. And for um, simple tactics and just spotting something quickly, um, I would do some, some easy tactics and just do a lot of them. But um, yeah, to, to make uh, a short answer, I guess uh, I would just say uh, spending a lot of time on chess, playing and uh, practice, practicing uh, with um, yeah, like tactics. Actually, videos is something I, I used to do a lot as well when I was a bit younger. I'm not doing it that much anymore, but it's generally uh, a good way of learning, I think, because it's a bit more uh, maybe interactive, you could say. But can, okay. could I add a question to that? Yes, because how course. much, um, when you say video, I guess you mean uh, pure theory, right? Uh, sorry, what did you mean? I mean like theory, uh, cramming pure theory, are you doing a lot of that? Oh, okay, yeah, uh, pure theory. Actually, I think this is maybe a bit overrated. Of course, um, there are a lot of advantages by being a strong opening player. Um, like, for example, uh, we can uh, see that Chris Jensen, another offer spill player, he knows a lot of openings and this gets him really far. He can just win immediately after the opening a lot of times, which is his big big strength and um, it's won him a lot of games. But also, in general, unless you're as good as him, I think that there will always be some point that where you have to think yourself and usually the games are, uh, are decided uh, later on uh, in the middle games yeah. and end games by tactics, yeah? Because my impression is at the, my level at least, uh, I think below the 1800s, um, yeah. no matter how much you prepare, uh, you will never end up in these uh, positions that they show you in the theory books. That's yes, like, this is exactly like you have to be... Yeah, this is exactly the point. Uh, I mean, if you spend your time doing uh, like tactics and practicing calculation instead, I think this will help you more. Of course, it's good to know some opening ideas, but spending all of your time studying, you know, um, lots of variations, uh, like endless variations to try to get this in a game and, and then trying to win with that. I'm not sure if it's the best idea because even if you get the position that you've looked at, unless it's like immediately winning, you're going to have to win that position as well, um, which is maybe not that easy. I've a lot of times gotten into preparation and had exactly what I'm hoping for, but then I realized that I still have to win the game and it's, it's not easy at all. Okay, so I will go to the next question. Um, let's see, what would I say is the main difference between a 2000 club player and a FIDE master? In experience, what does the FM do? And better in particular compared to 2000. Okay, um, that's also a hard question to ask because it could be many things uh, depending on what kind of a player you are. But I would uh, generally say that um, FMs would make less uh, big mistakes in the long run or even just mistakes uh, like smaller mistakes as well or, or blunders because... Um, uh, quite often I can uh, notice when I'm playing against, let's say, 2000, that they, they play uh, decent moves for a very long time, and then at some point they make a blunder. Um, I guess this is something that happens to anyone or everyone um, anyways, but uh, this is maybe the difference that uh, overall they blunder more, and I guess uh, the general understanding is also a bit lower just because um, they've probably spent less time studying chess but this is, of course, something you can uh, you can fix just by looking more uh, into chess. I think that's the best tips for that. How long until FM? I'm not sure if that question is for me because I'm already an FM. But if you meant I am, then I'm not sure. I'm trying to get there at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's not so easy. I'm hoping that I can get there this year. But of course, with uh, Corona, it's not easy to know what kind of um, um, tournaments there will be. Uh, Leech is down, very possible, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't tried to, to update the page, but maybe talking about you, uh, not uh, actually not, but uh, 
maybe i mean just 2000 players in in particular around there uh, I mean, it depends also in playing styles. There would will be some 2,000 players where I struggle more than others um, in terms of playing style. Maybe if they're very aggressive or um, solid, I, I'm not sure, uh, actually. Uh, let's see. Am I not Lucas Ranaldi? Yes, that's correct. How long did it take you? Okay, how long? It ah, okay. Um, yeah, now, now I understood your question. So uh, I started playing maybe when I was like 11 or 12 in, in real tournaments, uh, which is, I guess you could say quite young, but still not as early as uh, a lot of other players born the same uh, year as me or the same age. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I would just say uh, it's, uh, it's never too late to start because, I mean, you can always uh, get better and practice However, uh, I guess the question was how long it took me since I was 11 or 12 when I started and I'm 20 now. It took me like uh, five, no, five, six years of, of active tournament games because I did become an FM uh, actually quite a long time ago. I was around, yeah, I guess I was 16 or 17, no, 16. So uh, a few years ago, it took me uh, took me some years of very active playing, but it's uh, I guess it's possible to get there faster as well. It depends. Okay, always lose against strong players because of blunders, and not often, not that often, because I get outplayed. Yeah, um, that's uh, that's very true. Uh, you can also play good games uh, very often and then make some blunders uh, at uh, at a later point of the game. So this is the problem and if this is something that happens a lot to you then maybe uh, doing more uh, tactics or calculation is is a good idea started at 21 currently 22 hoping to hit 2000 by age 25 that's definitely possible i'm not sure where you're at now rating wise but that's uh, that's a good goal if you're uh, doing a lot of chess at the moment then uh, there should be uh, good chances for that Okay, so I think we're going to uh, to finish here now since uh, we're already a bit over time. But thank you for uh, for watching everyone and for um, for all the questions uh, as well. If you have anything more you would like to say, uh, Philip, you can you can add that. Uh, I just want to say a great uh, lesson. Thank, thanks for your time. It was uh, really useful, and uh, I think uh, many people might um, find this kind of lessons useful because. Many people at the lower levels probably uh, get more out of it when they can relate to the moves and the positions. Uh, I mean, like uh, when things are uh, are not that straightforward and a bit messy and chaos. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for that. I, I hope that uh, you found it useful, and uh, also for for the rest of you guys watching that you were able to learn something. So yeah, it was also uh, fun. Uh, fun giving you some advice and uh, being here again. So uh, yeah, I was happy to do that. All right, uh, I think we will uh, finish now. So once again, everyone, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.